advanced life in relentless pursuit of leadership excellence. Hello, my friend. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to come your way through this telecast. This has been specially put together with you in mind. Whatever your situation is as you listen, know that you are on God's mind. Whether it's for empowerment, a business move, spiritual growth, wisdom to make decisions, this is just for you. I just want you to sit back and relax and just get into this word and I know that your life will never be the same. Enjoy. But it's a good fight. It's a fight that somebody won for you and you are an enforcement agent. So you are, you are warring from a winning position. So there's almost like a fixed match. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's almost like a fixed match. You know when a match is fixed, the, the players who have bought the thing don't bother. <laughs> you know what I mean? The players who have, you know, the team that has bought the match, they, they don't bother. They know at the end of the day, yeah, no matter how lousy they are. <laughs> I'm not saying you are lousy, well, I'm not saying you are lousy, but, you know, the thing is already won. It's a fixed match. Somebody won it for us. Then on Wednesday night, how many of you were here on Wednesday night? Oh, yeah. You don't know what you missed. But we addressed the five secrets to prevailing faith, five principles. Very, 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 very important. You need to get those messages because we are building precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So you need to do that. Don't let there be gaps in the teaching. You need to get them as it goes. Invest a little bit of your hard-earned money in your tomorrow. First John chapter 5, have you found it? And today we're going to... Is there only two people who found it? Oh, well, it's on the screen. Okay, have you, have you seen it? <laughs> You've seen it. Okay. You know, don't let the screen thing make you lazy when it comes to finding the scriptures for yourself. You agree with me? Because you can be so spoon-fed by screens that a day will come when somebody asks you, where is this in the Bible? And you may not be able to help. You know, when Jesus went into the synagogue, the Bible says that the scroll was handed over to him and he found the place where it is written. He found the place where it is written. He found the place. You don't find what you're not looking for. Amen. So let's find where it is written. First John 5. We're going to read verse number 4 and 5. As we address overcoming faith, the faith that overcomes. First John chapter 5 and verse number 4. It says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God? Father, let your words come alive. Illuminate us, give us understanding. For you said that the entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding to the simple. So let it be that our faith today will not dwell on the wisdom or the philosophy of a man but on your power. Let your word become relevant. The places of our lives that we need them. Let your name be exalted in the house today. In Jesus' name, amen. We started by saying that the subject of faith is probably the most important aspect in our work with God. Faith is like blood to the body. No matter how beautiful you are, no matter how handsome you may be, no matter how accomplished you may be, 
If you lose your blood, you are a beautiful corpse. You are walking dead. You may not see blood, but blood is there. And the evidence that your blood is there and your blood is flowing and working is that you are alive and you are walking. You agree with me? You may not see faith as it is, that this is faith quantified in my hands. But faith has evidence. Hebrews 11 one says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And on Wednesday night, I gave you an analogy that if I came here into the house and I brought you the title deed to my house and I let you read it and you saw that this title deed has a name called Franco Fosopia that says that house number so and so belongs to me, paid for, signed, sealed, delivered, stamped. You may not have seen the house with your eyes, but the title deed that I showed to you will convince you that I have a house. You agree with me? Do you agree with me? Sometimes when you are stopped by the police, I want to give you an example that will wake you up. You are stopped by the police and he asks you, may I see the registration of your car? Your registration, if it matches your name, tells him that it is your car. It's not stolen property. Your faith is the title deed of what you are believing for. You may not have it in your, with, with your, you may not see it with your eyes, you may not have it in your hand, but it is the positive assurance that what God has promised, God will do. Faith is important in our lives, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6 that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, it doesn't mean that if you don't have faith, then God is very angry with you. And he's looking to zap you on the head with a taser or something. But without faith, your life or your relationship with God is not pleasing. God wants your life to please him. And the life that pleases God is to believe him even when you haven't seen it. Is to believe what he has said, even though everything about you looks contrary. And that is a statement positive that I have read the resume of the man. And once he has said it, he would deliver. The book says that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent or change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it? You see, he contrasts you and God. And he said, the reason why he's not like you is that he doesn't change his mind. Amen. Now, when we say he doesn't change his mind, it doesn't mean, because sometimes people get it wrong, that, well, it says God doesn't change, God doesn't change, but how come that he said this and now he's saying that? God doesn't change in his attributes. He is God forever. He was love, he is love, he forever be loved. He is eternal. But when it comes to his activities in your life, God is unpredictable. So he can meet a blind man and say be healed. He meets another blind man and puts spit on his eyes and say go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Unpredictable. That is why you must hear God for yourself. You cannot use somebody else's instructions for your life. Because too many people are living on second hand information. Because you did it for so and so. Yes, but are you so and so? When God wanted to open the Red Sea, he asked Moses to just tell the people to go forward. Somebody had to take a step into the water for it to open up. They didn't stand and say, well, we want to see this thing open first. And sometimes that is how we behave. That is not faith. Dr. Martin Luther King said, you don't have to see the whole staircase to start climbing. Are you hearing me? When he got to the Jordan and they wanted the Jordan to open, he didn't say, now tell the people to go forward. He got priests and said, let the priests step in and it opened. When he got to Elijah, he didn't even have to wait. He just took his mantle and smote the Jordan and the Jordan opened. You can see that God is unpredictable. When he came to Jesus, he didn't care about opening it. He just walked on it. (laughs) Get your instructions. Get your instructions. That is how vital 
all it is in your Christian life. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that we walk by faith. I didn't hear you. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says we walk by faith. We walk by faith. Which means the opposite of faith is not fear. The opposite of faith is sight. So you don't walk according to what your bank account is telling you now. You don't walk according to how your body feels now. You don't walk according to who is threatening you that went and you see now. You walk according to the one who has spoken that I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is the walk of faith. Amen? That is why the apostle Paul said that for this reason, for this reason, he had talked about, when you read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he said a whole lot of things from verse number 8. He talks about we are pressed down and, and never forsaken. We go through, the, one translation says that we, 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 we go through a lot of things and we don't even know why these things happen. I like the message Bible. It's, I, I'm not saying it, I'm quoting the message. He said we've been to hell and back and we are still standing. Yeah. I think I like, it sounds like a modern day Loganville translation. I mean, you use hell in a different way, but the, but the translator said that we've gone to hell and back. We've been road tested in and out, but we are still standing. That is the stuff that championship faith is made of. When people know what you have been through, when they see what you have been through, and they can't tell whether it is true or false, they heard the rumor that you have been, your house has been repossessed. They heard the rumor that they picked up your car at the office. They heard the rumor that somehow your husband walked out when you haven't done anything. They got the rumor that your son has been slapping you around the dining table, and yet there's a smile on your face, and you come to church, and it doesn't need the worship leader to kind of move you, and you are singing, and you are dancing, and they are kind of confused, and they want to pick up a conversation to find out out, uh, and yet they can't get it. That is the stuff that championship faith is made of. And that is the overcoming faith that I'm talking about today. Amen. Your home may be in turmoil. It's become a little bit of hell on earth. Your business may, may be down. Friends may have let you down badly. People have betrayed you. People that you trusted may have let out your secret. But your confidence is in the fact that, listen, even though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, anytime I read that, I get a little bit frustrated with Paul the Apostle. You said light affliction? And I said, Paul, have you read 2 Corinthians chapter 11? He said, I wrote it. And I know what I'm talking about. For our light affliction, which means compared to what God is about to reveal to you, everything that you are going through right now is a light affliction. Compared to the baby that you are going to hold in your hands, uh, the short hours of labor is a light affliction. Weeping may end. I want somebody to have some overcoming faith that people cannot predict whether you are going through anything. For our light affliction, which works in, more, in us, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Whilst we do not look at the things that are seen, it doesn't mean that you don't look at things, but don't zero in your attention on what you are seeing right now. Don't think that this is the end of your life. Listen, the bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you refuse to turn. God Almighty is about to do something in your life. Uh, the downfall of a man, the downfall of a woman uh, is not the end of your life. Uh, the, your, your background may not be good, but it doesn't mean your back must be on the ground forever. And it's time for somebody like Jabez to look at your situation and declare that, yeah, they may have called me a pain giver, but I refuse to stay here. I am getting up one more time and I'm doing something with my life. And somebody, that is the mountain moving overcoming faith that I'm talking about. Faith doesn't deny the facts, but faith superimposes a higher truth. On what is there. When the whole earth was without form and void. And darkness was reigning supreme. God had a dream. And that dream was dream of order in his heart. And God stepped into the chaos of darkness. And, and everything. And, and God began to reorder darkness. If you notice in Genesis chapter 1. Nine times. God vocalized his desire. We'll, we'll deal with that when we talk about the language of faith. Because faith speaks. God didn't sit back and. Call his counsel of Elohim, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And say, guys, we got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. And one of those, I know, I know, I know. You're talking about the darkness, aren't you? 
say, yeah. But what, what you're going to do about the darkness? It's, it's, I think it's getting a little bit more dark. You know how sometimes you can get miserable friends? After you finish a two-minute conversation, you are six foot, you get three feet. You have color ID. You don't have to pick all the, those calls. You know it. There are some, you know it's coming. You know it's coming. When it's coming, it's doing. You know it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. But the Bible says that God, look at me, God said, God said, God did not deny the fact that darkness upon the face of the deep was upon the face of the deep. That the earth was without form and void. But God knew something that he could superimpose his truth over that fact. So God said, let there be light. The literal Hebrew says that, and God said, light in me be. God superimposed what was on the inside of him upon it. Not until you have the word of God on the inside of you, you cannot superimpose it. That is why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you are full of the word, your complaining go down. In this scripture, the beloved disciple John makes a powerful statement that we need to unpack in this few minutes and I'm going to sit down. He said, whatever is born of God, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome, not will, has overcome. You see, God is eternal and he talks and calls the things that be not as though they are. Whatever is born of God which means if you are born of God, get this revelation. When you get this one, you'll forever be a stranger to defeat. You will never be bullied by circumstances again. Oh, I, I'm not feeling you this, this, this morning. Listen, he says that whatever is born of God. Is anybody born of God? We'll find out in a minute. We'll find out in a minute. Because I told you the other day that life will ask you questions. On Wednesday night, I asked you. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Life will have a way of asking you questions. And you must settle this once and for all, whether you are God or you are not. How many of you have seen, what was the name of that little dog that we had on Wednesday? Doglets, yeah. You know, you know, I'm still trying to learn English. A little dog, and I said doglet, but until somebody corrected, one of the Englishians, they corrected me that it's a puppy. So I've been... But, you know, <laughs> but if we have a piglet, why can't we have a doglet? <laughs> now, this is a Douglas. I mean, I'm talking about doglet. Douglas. This thing called English language, who invented it? It's, it's, I don't understand why. It's a very funny language. You agree with me? What's the plural of a mouse? Mice. What about louse? So why can't house be highs? What is, it, it, it bothers me. Especially the, uh, the American type. The American type. It, uh, the American type really bothers me. Because Americans drive on the parkway and park in the driveway. I mean, what's the point? <laughs> I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I, I just, I'm confused. It, it messes me up. What was I saying before I digressed? <laughs> doglet. How many of you have seen a doglet before? Doglet. And if you happen to see a little puppy barking, do you get surprised? That why is it barking? Why? Because it's a dog. If it barks like a dog, talks like a dog, walks like a dog, it's a dog. But how many of you have seen a fish swimming? Do you get amazed that a fish is swimming? Why? Because whatever is born of a fish swims. When you get out of here and you see a fish, Riding a bicycle, that is a miracle of biblical proportions. You, you agree with me? And he says that whatever is born of God, something must come with you naturally. And that is, you, <laughs> you are an overcomer. That is, which means regardless of what I'm going through right now, I am here, it is here, and it is here that I am born of God. And so I overcome, I overcome. And there is a victory settled that, that has already overcome. I'm here to manifest it, and that is my faith in Almighty God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the problem, the challenge with many people is that we, we don't know that we are born of God. We talk it, but we don't live it. It is vital 
Too many people sit in church for years and they have serious issues because they come to church, they sing, they pray, they cry a little bit on the side, but they stay defeated. Defeated Christians. Why? Because they lack an understanding of who they are. Whatever is born, are you born of God? Listen, you will never win the battle of faith until you win the battle of your identity. The first prong attack against Jesus on the Mount of Temptation, Matthew chapter 5, Luke, Matthew 4, Luke 4. In Matthew 4 and 3, when Satan came to Jesus after 40 days, the Bible says he, the first question was, if you are the son of God. The issue was not turning the stones into bread. No, no, no. The issue was the, the enemy wanted to prod him to find out whether he truly believes in who he is. And let me tell you, you are not a son or daughter. Well, you are a son. Whether you are a woman or a man, you are a son. If God calls me a bride, then I'm okay. So you are a son, it's fine. <laughs> I'm a bride of Christ. So what's your problem? <laughs> Frankie bride. Is that, no. but, but listen, but listen. He wanted, he, he wanted to find out. And listen, you are not a child of God, a son of God, whatever, because of what you do. No. That is not what makes you a child of God. Not what you do. Listen, when Jesus was, I wish I had all the time, we'll come and unpack why Jesus Christ was announced at 30 years. Because in that culture, you don't become a full man until you get to 30. That is when your father will announce you to the world that this is my son and everything that I am, he is. So in the Jordan, when he was being baptized, you hear me? He took a baptism he didn't need. Sometimes people come to say, Pastor, I don't want to take this membership thing. I've been in church for a long time. Yes, Jesus himself has been around for a long time, but he took something he didn't need. It went quiet. I'm going to try it over here. Are you understanding me? When the dove, the holy, remember the dove when he left Noah's ark? Never came back, flattered, looking for where it will land. And several millennia later, found the man upon whose head it will land. Descended from heaven and landed upon the head of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the father spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved son, identity, in whom I am well pleased, affirmation. Hear him. Question. After that time, had Jesus won the miracle? There's no trick in this. Pretend you know your Bible. After that time, had Jesus ever won the... No, forget about those who write books and say, when Jesus was 12, he did clay animals and threw them and they began to fly. It's not in, your, in my Bible. Or it's your Bible. But, but you had, you had, had he done anything? And yet, Father says that I love him. He's my son. Which means people of God. God doesn't love you because of what you do. God doesn't affirm you because of what you have accomplished. God loves you because of who he has made you. So when you wake up in the morning, whether you have done it or you haven't done it, look at yourself and accept the fact that he said that you are my beloved daughter and I love you. It is not your accomplishment that does anything. My question is, who are you? The sad thing is that a lot of people confuse who they are with who they, what they do. So when you ask them, who are you? They reply by what they do. Who are you? I'm a doctor. Who are you? I'm a pastor. Who are you? I'm a tailor. Who are you? No, don't say I'm a thief. Who are you? I mean, it's, it's, you were about to say that I saw you. I, I anticipated you. <laughs> I know you don't type, but you keep it to yourself. Who are you? These are little, little, little things that we drop. Then you go home, then you, uh, this man. But listen, who are you? You don't reply by saying, he's not saying, what do you do? So when they, say, they ask you, who are you? The answer will be that I am a child of God. Are you hearing me? That is who God has made me. It is insecurity that always want people to prove who they are by their titles. Let me tell you something. It is not your title that makes you anything. You can have a title as long as anything. You can have more degrees than a thermometer. But not until you know who you are. Yeah. 
I met a guy the other day. His, his titles were, you had to make sure you mentioned all of them. Makes me, makes me remember Idi Amin. Field Marshal Dr. Idi Amin Dada. Life Chancellor of the University of Makerere. President for life. But he found out that you don't do this thing for life. What he has made you is for life. Your identity is not in a title. And by the way, it is not a title that defines you. It is you who define the title. Yeah. Hear me, a leader. Maybe a leader is listening to me. Listen to me. Listen, there are people who will never say, there are people who will never operate in the house of God or anywhere until they are given a title. If you need a title to operate, you are not a leader. If people won't follow you at the back, they won't follow you in the front. Because I've seen people, they didn't give me a title, so I've left church. You are little, you are in diapers. You are, you are still sucking the feeding bottle. You need lactogen to grow. Some people must just grow up in the house of God. Because it's not a title, it's the effect. effect. What do you do in such a way that when you are not there, you are missed? Only three and a half people. I, I, I know some of you are getting hot around the collar, so let, let, me go, let, let me go right ahead. Listen, your identity is connected to who gave birth to you. That is why when there's suspicion around the birth of a baby, they take a paternity test. I can't see you, don't worry. Just, no, I can't actually hear you. They're giving me light now. They, why do they take a paternity test, not a maternity test? Because of the seed. The life of the blood is in the seed. That is why the, the enemy tries genocide on male seeds. Because that is what propagates life. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So, am, I, am I doing all right? I want to teach you a little. I'm going to step out of your way in a few minutes. But I want somebody to get this. Who you are connected to, who gave... I hope you have enjoyed this telecast. There's an information on the screen if you want to get in touch with us. In fact, we would really love to hear from you. So just write to us, send us an email, send us a message, and let us know how much we can also keep blessing you. I pray for you that God Almighty will order your ways. He will bless you. He will keep you. He will secure you. He will make you the best ever. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.